official unemployment rate in South Africa rose to 25.5% of the labor force in the third quarter of this year. That's from 24.9% in the second quarter. Joining us from Cape Town is Michael Bagram from Bagram Attorneys. Michael, the news never gets better in terms of the employment situation in South Africa. The last couple of times that we've spoken, it's been going in the wrong direction and it doesn't look as though there is any hope in the short term. Well, I, I think maybe in the short term we, we could have a problem because if you understand this quarterly labor force survey is from the months of July to September 2012, it doesn't take into account October. And as we all know, October was a disastrous month. Um, that's when the mines all went on their major strikes. And that's also the time we saw that the dismissals all took place. That being said, we have had an increase in employment of almost 400,000 uh, from uh, quarter two to quarter three, which I think is pretty good. I think that's we're going in the right direction in that. And I think we're actually starting to turn the corner. I, I don't think it's all bad news. I, I want to talk this up a bit because I'm starting to see that there has been an increase in employment in most of the sectors. Okay, domestic private households, there was a decrease. But in most of the other sectors, we did have an increase compared to the last quarter. Uh, you must also understand that this is a cyclical, and also because of the, um, the time of the year, we're starting to increase employment, say, in the retail and the manufacturing, because as we build up to the Christmas season. So it's not entirely bad news. And I, I personally am, am reasonably happy with what took place from July to September. I, I certainly feel better with that upbeat stance. I, I know, Mark, you've got a question. On yeah, I was just wondering, uh, for those who don't understand the survey as well as you do, Michael, could you just explain to us, does it include informal and formal employment? Does it include uh, full-time and part-time? Does it include government? And to what degree does it uh, cover various um, uh, uh, sectors of, of business? Yeah, th thank you for that, and it, it, it certainly includes all of that. Look, one of the real problems that we've had, and we spoke about this last time, is that this includes the employment in government itself, and government is trying to boost up the figures, uh, which is a madness, because they're growing bigger and bigger and fatter and fatter, and certainly that's going to put in, not putting more tax into the system. It also includes the, the informal jobs, which is growing at an enormous rate, which is good. At least people are going out there and saying that we, we need to find employment. Uh, you must understand also that, and it's interesting because we never talk about this, we think that all employees in South Africa have annual leave, we think they all get sick leave, and they did an interesting survey and they said the pro in between this quarter and last, the second and third quarter, the proportion of employees with access to paid annual leave and paid sick leave declined, while maternity leave increased. They're saying that about only half of the people get actually <laughs> annual leave. It's, it's quite ridiculous. And they also say that only half of the employees in South Africa are contributing towards the UIF. Now, you know, most of the formal jobs that we know about, you get sick leave, you get annual leave, you get UIF, but this is not the case and this is not the norm anymore. And I, I think that is quite strange. Also, um, many employees, and they're saying almost half, or 60% don't have contracts of employment. So we don't actually know whether they're short term or permanent. So the question is very difficult to answer. I don't want to dampen that upbeat stance that you're assuming this evening, but let's factor in what will happen when we input those numbers from October. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, I think once we factor that in, in October, because the backbone of our economy, and your guests will tell you this evening, that without the mining sector, South Africa is looking very poorly in, in the rest of the world. And that is the backbone of our economy. And we know there's bloodshed. We know that there's a, a crisis in this, in this particular arena. And we also know that it's a knock-on effect. So we're getting strikes in all sorts of other areas because they're watching what's happening on the mines, like we saw with the transport, um, when in fact they already had a settlement, but they saw what happened to the mines and they're looking at revisiting it. And we also saw Mr. Vavi two days ago announcing that they're going to have a look at all these, these factors. So I think the fourth quarter is not going to be as rosy as what we're seeing here. When I read this and I see this, and I also I 
working on the ground with uh, small companies here in Cape Town, we know that everyone's gearing up for the Christmas season. We know that the manufacturing is going, it's humming. People are employing. My firm is busy writing out letters of appointment and contracts of employment. So things are looking good. I'm just not so sure that when we factor in what happened in October, where we had that, that terrible October, and, it, and when we look back in many years to come, when we look back in October 2012, a lot of us are going to shudder. Yeah, Michael, what I'm picking up from mining is that we've had this mini black swan event in the last few weeks. And I think what's coming out of that with, with management is that they're zero basing. They're, they're pretty much saying, forget what we have, what do we actually need? And that will mean a root and branch rethink of how they do business going forward. And it gets back to that capital labor ratio that I, I mentioned earlier. Yeah, you, you're absolutely right. Uh, the black swan event proves that, in fact, we do have black swans. And we're probably going to see more of it in the future. Um, the, the Chinese always say that uh, a crisis is an urgent opportunity. And the opportunity for the mining sector was to, to weed out some of the staff, to thin down uh, some of their processes, and to see exactly what it is they actually need. And then to run very lean, both management and staffing. Um, and we are hoping that that will save us. Uh, I'm no expert in the mining sector, but from what I'm understanding is they've had a careful look at this and they've had a look at their prices of the actual uh, stuff they're digging out of the ground and saying what pays and what doesn't pay. Um, I think they're, they're clever enough to say let's use this crisis as an urgent opportunity. 